Your morning blitz begins now. Get that chance. Go play for a national championship. We're going to swing as hard as we possibly can. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, on the blitz. It's an ugly Monday night football game last night, if you were watching. You thought? Yeah. I mean, if I'm the Bills, there's nothing to be proud of there. You squeaked out a win, but yeah, they should have lost. Can't blame Aaron Rodgers, man. Kicker. Kicker missing two field goals late in the game. Yep. He's a whiner, though. But I thought it was a good game. I thought, it, I mean, there was a lot of good defense played, and it was big plays made on offense. And came down to the end. It was a good game. He's just a whining head case. Who? Rodgers. Well, sometimes you have a right. There's some bad calls or non-calls. A couple there, but, you know, he just... Rogers bothers me, and not because of what you're going to say. I wasn't going to say anything. I know, but what you were thinking. I just, for a guy who spent years talking about how he didn't like and didn't want to become Brett Favre, boy, you sure have followed that path from every aspect. Yeah, I mean, that was his mentor. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it's funny. Students all the things, like the teacher. All the things you called out Favre for and didn't like about Favre. <laughs> Hi, pot, meat, kettle. Man, we gotta we gotta try to not get fired today. Okay, well we don't have Kelly here to keep us in line. Well, you know, <laughs> I know yeah, she's out for a couple of days. Poor Kelly. We should get a cardboard stand-in of Kelly and just sit her over there. <laughs> with I, just have, a, I have audio drops of her. We could just use with those. Just that, like, you know, are you kidding me? Scowl. That way we would know. <laughs> we just look at that direction if there's anything questionable ever said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Kelly. 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 Word. Word. Let's go to the Kelly cutout. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. <laughs> She'll be back Thursday. I Just know. in time to uh tear you apart at Think Fast. Oh, I do need to win. She found a game to beat you at, didn't she? <laughs> I'm Aaron Rodgers. I need a couple of calls. You know, a couple of brutal calls that weren't fair. Oh, hey, speaking of football, we're talking about college football here. Not not the game. You know, if you're, if you're not a fan of the game, this is this is interesting. Because all the stuff came out about Garth Brooks. You know, yes. he's got these charges. And, and, and you know, he's he seems really upset. Like, he's ready to counter sue and all that. But regardless, um, you know, in Tennessee, um, when they would get to the fourth quarter of a game at Tennessee... They would all in the stadium. They would always play. You know that would, that's been a tradition for I don't know how long. I didn't I went, know how long. I went to school there for a year. And was it then? Yep. It was going on then. Yep. Okay, so it's been going on for a minute, and so now they've pulled that, and they have uh, switched it to uh, Morgan Wallen, who's another big country artist, mm-hmm. and he's also a big Volunteers fan. And they've switched it to his song called The Way I Talk, which right here is where he mentions the volunteers. It gets slower at the three or four Kobe's. It gets louder when I'm cheering on the volunteers. So they, they hit that, like, out of nowhere going into the fourth quarter Saturday, and the fans went crazy and were, like, singing at the top of their lungs. And now the... Uh, the school says it's not because of Garth's accusations. They said this has been in the work for months. If I was a rival school, I'd play some of Morgan Wallen's racial slurs. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe encourage his volunteers to throw chairs out of the stands onto the field. I don't know. Again, one guy accused of sexual assault, the other guy accused of physical assault. Come on. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, Garth's from Oklahoma. Right. And Morgan's from Tennessee. Tennessee. He's a huge Vols fan. And, you know, he name drops the team. And, yeah, fans went crazy when they started playing that. But I just thought that was interesting that they're saying it had nothing to do with Garth being, you know, accused. You know what? Morgan Wallen's a great example of your guy can do something, but if he's your guy, you're willing to look past it. Well, that's most people. You know what I mean? That Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody hated Morgan Wallen and then went, Oh wait! All his people are still buying his records. We should put him back out there, right? And they did, <laughs> and he's quite successful, right? It's one of those things. It's like the same way with politicians. It's like that guy's terrible. That guy's terrible. What about your guy? Well, so what? That yeah, guy's terrible. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, you know, that's crazy how that works. Oh man! But that's that is America. 
That, yep. Ain't that America? Yep. Home uh, of the free. We going to see any sunshine today? No. No? Still no. No, but it's going to get nicer as the week goes on, in case you were wondering. Uh, overcast today, scattered light rain. It's been that this morning. Uh, then tonight, we're getting a little bit of cold, and then tomorrow, partly cloudy, and then the sun comes back after that. So All make right. it through a cloudy... Oh, wait. Make it through a cloudy taco slash hawk Tuesday. Oh, nobody to yell at you. Nobody to yell at me. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the, we don't even have a Kelly cardboard cutout, but I can feel the scowl. Hawk to it. I didn't feel anything. Nothing. No problem. For whatever reason. <laughs> All right. Morning Blitz trivia. All right. So uh, there was a big Game of Thrones auction, and they uh, raked in over $21 million, and the most expensive item went for $1.5 million. What do you think it was? Do you know what that item was? Be the first one to text in the correct answer at 99700. If you're right, you will get a gift card to Waterbeds and was stuff. It? And beds and stuff superstores for twenty five bucks. Don't what was are you it? Dion's pride and joy <laughs> that came in a box <laughs> it was just just some, no. It's just some summer sauce. Oh, I'm not a I'm savage. Not, not, a, not a savage over here. <laughs> All right, <laughs> what item went for one and a half million? Tell us at ninety nine seven hundred. Be first, get the gift card. If I could go back in time, Square Hammer would be my football name. It's Ghost on the Morning Blitz. <laughs> Square Hammer busting through the line. Right, probably not. <laughs> It sounded cooler in my head than it did when I vocalized it. It's the Morning I mean, Blitz, hey, yeah. 622 with Thick Rick, and I'm Lewis. Kelly Quinn is off for a couple days. She's having some uh, things. She's got things going on. She's got stuff going on that doesn't require us being around. <laughs> By the way, ever since you mentioned the Empire Strips back, it's in my damn feed all the time. <laughs> Never heard of it before till yesterday. Now I can't stop seeing well, of it. Of course, that's how things work now. Yeah. They're watching you. They are. Always. They are. They're always watching all of us. I know. It's morning blitz trivia this morning. All right, the uh, question was there was a big Game of Thrones auction, a lot of memorabilia. They uh, took in over $21 million. The most expensive item went for $1.5 million. What was the item? Figured even if you didn't know about the auction, it was probably an easy guess. Although it is not the original uh, Iron Throne, which is the answer. It's a replica. They still paid one point five million for a replica of it. I don't understand that. I mean, one point five million. Don't you want the one that was on the set? Probably, unless Drogon really melted it down. No, I don't think about that. I wonder what Theon's uh, severed penis would have went for replica of that <laughs> i don't know we never saw it but we knew we, well, yeah, we knew we because knew. he got kicked in the junk he won a fight because he didn't have Wasn't one that the greatest thing ever because the dude kept kicking him in the junk and he was like <laughs> i know <laughs> nothing there dude <laughs> by the way that show might have had more dudes without proper equipment oh, than yeah. any show ever in the history well, i mean the whole the whole uh, army Daenerys's whole army were eunuchs yep and then there was the eunuch who constantly talked about watching his get thrown into the fire. Right. <laughs> which, which I don't know what would be worse. The pain of losing it or then watching it some, someone throw it into the fire after you've lost it. Like, I always I always want to say some uh, talk about things they did back then. And I'm like, back then? When is then? This is not a real place. It's not a time. It's a, I don't even know what you call it. It's another, I don't know. It's another universe or whatever, you know? It's not a time. It, I mean, it, it's supposed to be like uh, old times, but yeah. you know, there were no dragons in real old times. There was not. So, but uh, yeah, uh, it was a replica, a, a replica, replica, replica of the throne. And um, it was molded from the original screen used mm. throne. And somebody was willing to pay $1.5 million for it. Uh, Jon Snow's long claw sword. Uh, one of them, I guess there was more than one, but one of them went for four hundred grand. Wow! I mean, if I had the money, I'm that big of a fan. Well, they make sword, if I was rich. There's they they make what they call the hero sword, which is the one that they you up close you can see that's the real. Then they have the one that's the uh, like a fighting replica that swings. It's a hard rubber version. Yeah, used in the action scenes, it went for one hundred and six thousand dollars. And then uh, Jamie Lannister's black leather armor went for two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Wow. And I don't know what all is included in it. It just says Arya Stark's boy ensemble. I guess when they, you know, when he cut all her hair off and made her look like a boy and dressed her like a boy, that outfit went for 150 grand. Wow. 
So, uh, Doug said he literally just started watching Game of Thrones. Great first seven seasons, dude. Seven seasons oh, so. of fantastic TV. The eighth is just absolute dumpster fire trash. Don't listen to him, Doug. You're, see, Doug, here's the thing. Yeah, here we go. Here's your benefit. You, your benefit is if you stream it all at once, yes. it's great. If yes. you watched it in order like everybody else did, you'll hate it. Right. And that's, that's well, I mean, that's what everybody says. Can you tell we've had this argument 13 well, It's not times. an argument. It's, a, it's the truth. Everybody who watched it, you know, one week at a time, year after year, says what you said. And I understand that. And everybody who binge watched it like me says they, they were fine with you. No. I binge watched it the second time. The eighth season is still trash. You already knew what was going to happen. Stop. <laughs> I'm uh, not going to argue about it with you because there's nothing to argue Kelly's about. Kelly's out here. We can argue about it. Well, but I mean, it doesn't matter. There's nothing to argue about. Uh, Kelly has a, is having eye procedure done, Clay. That's why she's not in today. Um, damn it. What? I lost my mic condom. <laughs> Very. <laughs> wonder what that replica would go for. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we sell it? <laughs> All right. Well, Ethan Rodeback from Utica was the first one to text in the correct answer, so he's got 25 bucks to waterbeds and stuff. It's the Morning Blitz. And now it's time for I've Got Something. <laughs> Let's see if these dummies have anything worthwhile for us. All right. 636. It's Dick Rick and Lewis Kelly is out today. She'll be back on Thursday. And we're one dummy short. We are one dummy short today. <laughs> I guess I'll go first. All right. Second most trending costume this Halloween season is Ray Gunn, who is the breakdancer from <laughs> Australia yeah. from the Summer Olympics. So I have this for for I Got Something. The head spin hole. You being a former breakdancer, yes. uh, I'm assuming this is real. A guy developed a scalp tumor after decades of breakdancing. Yeah. I mean, you'll get some balding. If you do that a lot. Is that what happens? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's not good for your hair. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, researchers in Denmark published a case report revealing an unexpected consequence of breakdancing, especially the head spin. There are risks. Carpal tunnel, other nerve problems. Carpal tunnel? Yeah. From breakdancing? Yep. But Why the community, that- this one has really rocked the breakdancing community. Head spin hole. It's an adverse injury that can affect the scalp. The condition begins with hair loss, what's what you said, but can develop into a significant bump on the top of your head. In the case report published Thursday, the medical journal BMJ, a man in his early 30s who had been breaking for nearly 20 years was treated for a benign tumor that had grown more than an inch thick. The condition, sometimes referred to as the breakdance bulge, <laughs> I would have thought a breakdance bulge was something completely different. It's thought to be caused by repeated friction between the scalp and the floor during head spins, compounded by the pressure exerted doing the move. All right. I, I did, I mean, I did from time to time spin on my head, but it was not a thing I did a lot because it was hard and I wasn't great at it. Like some guys you see can just keep going and going and it's like, yeah, so I don't think I will have that problem. Well, this guy's happy. He reported discomfort and soreness and he said he avoided public outings, public outings for a long time, but after surgeons removed the growth, he was relieved. It's great to be able to go out in public without a cap or a hat. Many people tell me they don't notice the bump anymore and that my head looks completely normal. There you go. So, yeah. So, he's fine. He's fine. Okay, well, good. Yeah, I don't have any any no. kind of bumps up there. Yeah. No, I did. I just didn't do it that much. Mm. It's hard, man. You like, spin on your head is not easy. You are more of a tail spinner? <laughs> knee spin. No. Got the knee spin, yeah. Best knee spin in Columbus, I'll tell you. <laughs> Kind of not joking. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were. <laughs> All right, I got something. Ohio marijuana sales. You know, we became legal recreationally this year. We did. And we started selling the first week of August uh, recreational marijuana. And the Buckeye State, since that, from that first week of August to the first week of October, $100 million in Non-medicinal sales. This is just recreational sales. That doesn't include medicinal sales. They've done a hundred million dollars in two months. I'm like, yeah, that's why it's legal. And you know, it's the one. This is the one time where we can thank the state of Michigan because the Ohioans who kept driving to Michigan to buy weed made Ohio go, "Hey, they're taking our money and just giving it to Michigan." Well, then we got to legalize it. So they did because it's all about money. Sure it is. 
So thank you, thank you, Michigan, for that. I appreciate that. Well, but I mean, Ohio, Ohio was late to the gambling table, to the gambling party, mm. and for years, everybody went out of state to Indiana or wherever to Websites. go gamble. Yeah, yeah, to go gamble, and then all of a sudden, Ohio was like, "We sure are losing a lot yeah, of money." Yeah. Of course, man. <laughs> once, should, your, once the money starts leaving your state, right. for other states who are allowing it, you're, you have to make the change. We should get that in here. <laughs> Let's open a casino or thirty of them. I, I believe that's a whole thing going on now. I think New York and New Jersey are going same to be dealing with the same kind of yep. thing. So they're they're going to end up. Well, the argument for years was, oh, if you if you gamble, it's just going to bring all the criminals in. <laughs> no, it brings all the senior citizens out. Go walk, go look through the casino. You know who's there all day right. long? Old people. <laughs> <laughs> One foot on a grave, the other on a slot, a hand on a slot machine lever, and the no, other on a banana no, peel. It's not all old people. All right. But they have more time. <laughs> they, have more, they have more time available. You know, more time for fun to go out and do things. So that's what it is. But uh, so here's the deal with um, these cold temperatures in my plants. I was going to take them in. I saw, you know, I, I don't do anything until I research things. But I, I always end up coming back to Blitz Nation because I see so many different things online. Um, we're going to get down into the 30s for the next couple of nights. Right. And that's not great for your plants because of frost. And... Um, I have read, don't take them indoors and outdoors because the extreme change in temperature is not good for them. To go from cold to to warm and back to cold. Plus, they have to be kept in the dark. Mm. You know, from from sundown to sunup, it needs to stay pitch black or they'll return to their, they'll try to go back to a vegetative stage. Anyway, um, so I guess I don't want to do that. But a lot of people are covering their plants because the whole point is as long as the moisture can't settle onto the buds Mm -hmm. and then freeze you're okay so they'll they'll just cover them with you know plastic or sheets or something so that the moisture won't settle on them and i just wondered if anybody in blitz nation could tell me does that work is that okay does heather get upset when you grab your sleeping bag every night to go downstairs and sleep next to your plants (laughs) No, she gets the whole bed to herself. <laughs> just wondering. You know, so. Uh, yeah, I just wonder if anybody had any advice on that as far as these cold nights. Because it's not, I don't want to pull it yet because it's not quite where I want it. The okay. trichomes are milky, but they, I haven't got any amber color in them yet. Well, it's good that you went to Blitz Nation for your Mexican haze. I'm going to Blitz Nation for the <laughs> seven or eight people, including <laughs> Doug, James, and Eric, who have all texted in to say, no, we all binge watching the, the last season of Game of Thrones is still trash. You guys don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we do. Spare Tooth on the morning blitz. Dick Rick, Kelly, Quinn, not in today. She'll be back on Thursday. I'm Lewis. Don't forget, Ronnie Hunter gave you the Sonic Temple song of the day yesterday at 420. We will play that back later this morning. Hopefully you know what it is and you're listening. It could be your way into Sonic Temple 2025. I can always count on Blitz Nation. They didn't let you down, did Oh, they? my gosh. Um. Now, somebody said leave them out. You don't need to cover them. But then if they get moisture on them and then they freeze and then they thaw and then they can get bud rot, and that was my big concern, and everybody's texting in. Jason said I cover mine with trash bag when it gets cold outside. Uh, Doug said put a sheet on your plant. Just make sure it doesn't look like a KKK hood. That's look, going back to the candle. <laughs> the cl- the clandle? The body works. The clandle. Um, let's see, uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, I lost the other one. It was a good one. Um, who said, uh, they covered theirs with sheets as well. So that's, uh, yeah, Brian. Brian said, I always use sheets and I've never had a problem. So, yeah. Did somebody said, uh, did somebody said they can stand, uh, down to 18 degrees. Wow. I don't know, man. Carl said, cover them with a sheet for the night, but the colder temp should prompt to prompt prompt them to finish ripening which i've heard that too a lot of people say wait till after the first frost to pull them you know and uh so we said the trichomes are, are milky you're good but everybody said wait till some of those trichomes because they get milky but they're still white when they start turning that turning that amber color and you get at least 10 percent of them amber then that's the best time to pull them so uh but that's good to know i can keep them outside and cover them and that'll do the job so I will do that for sure. I have a bunch of black sheets, or I could use trash bags, either one. Maybe I'll use both. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'll get good advice. I've learned pretty quickly how well-versed in weed farming Blitz Nation oh, truly is. Oh, man. 
I, you know, and I think that some of them, it's just, it's just a hunch, Lewis, but I think some of them were growing it actually before it was legal. <laughs> just sounds maybe, you know, possibly, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks like there's had, you know, for, for such a short span of legality involved, <laughs> it seems like years of field work have then been done prior to. I mean, so, either that or someone became like professionals really good right. at it really quick. Is there like a secret weed overnight 24 hour crash course you can take on the dark web for when it becomes legal in your state? <laughs> oh, there has man. to be. Uh, Matt says they sell frost blankets at home improvement stores. Frost blankets. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so the person said don't even worry, said they didn't cover theirs last year and had no problem. I don't know, man. I'm going to cover them just to be safe. It can't hurt, obviously, right? So right. I, I'm going to go ahead and cover them. I, I, I know I'm just days away. I, I can't take more than a few. I, I got to believe by the end of this week, because the other plant's already drying. It's I've already pulled it, and it's drying. So... This one, they were both came at the same time. This one's just taking a little longer. But it's it's bigger. It's got some gigantic buds on it. I, could, I, I won't be able to smoke it all in five years, man. I'm not even kidding. So I'm going to be giving out some Christmas well, maybe presents. Maybe you need to try harder. Instead of shots of Jaeger at Sonic next year, I'm giving out joints. <laughs> you know, there will probably be people okay with that. I'm, I have no doubt. Here for I'm, the joint, man. <laughs> where's my free sample? <laughs> Mexican haze, bro. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Elon Musk and his oh, autonomous why? future that has arrived. Dude, did you not see this yesterday? This was crazy. The stuff he's got. So you're, you're putting Elon Musk and crazy in the same sentence. Oh. Well, I think you got to be a little crazy. You're kind of like a mad scientist, right? Wouldn't you say? Yeah. You know? So, um, I mean, he's, he's, a different, he's a different dude. But uh, he offered up some things... Uh, at this at this event he did um, where he's you know presenting these new items uh, the first one was his driverless cyber cab which Kelly talked about the other day uh, Elon wrote it to the event and uh, it, people at the event were able to actually test it out uh, he said the autonomous future is here and he says the cabs will be available just before 2027 and they will sell for under $30,000 so if you wanted to buy a, one of these autonomous cab company, you want to put together an autonomous cab company, that's, you're going to pay less than 30000 a car, which I thought was crazy. I thought they'd be much more expensive than that. And then there's the uh, robo- Robovan, as he calls it. I thought it was Robovan, but he says Robovan. And this is a 20-person massive driverless vehicle. This was a surprise at the event. Here he is talking about it. So this can, this can carry up to 20 people, and it can also uh, transport goods. So you can configure it for goods transport within a city, uh, or transport of up to 20 people at a time. So this is going <laughs> to... The Reboven is what's going to solve for high density. So if you, if you want to take a sports team somewhere, or um, you're looking to, to really uh, get uh, the cost of travel down to, I don't know, 5, 10 cents a mile... Then you can use the Reboven. Okay, so if you're a parent, you know, and it's your, it's your daughter's volleyball team, and they've got a game across town at the other schools, you know, at the other school, and the Robovans picking up all the girls at their homes. You okay with that? No. No? Not okay with it? Until, again, I'm a bad example at this because I only kind of pseudo parented, and well, that clearly didn't go very well. So. <laughs> Oh, come on. But if I am a real, true parent, I'm not using anything like this until there is a flawless service record and it's been in widespread use and everybody yeah. else feels comfortable. Right. I'm not. This is not my experimental thing. It's like when the new Windows comes out right. for a computer, you don't want it until it's on like the third version. And let me just say this. If I found out that my neighbors let this happen with my kids, their kids, and the other neighbor kids, I'm going to be pissed. Oh, you might, it's so like your kid got on one yeah, with because the other neighbors' kids. parents yeah. told them to do it. Yeah, there will be a reckoning that I, would happen. I at gotta that point believe, in time. like if schools get these things and they're using them, your parent will have to sign a permission right. form yeah. for that. I gotta believe you have to do that. And for, if I were to find out liability that, purposes, if I were to find out that, let's you know how a lot of parents like trade duties where one will pick up one one week from practice, then the next will pick up another. Yeah. If I find out the neighbor kids' parents sent the right. robo van to pick up my kids <laughs> from practice, again, I'm gonna be pissed. 
All right. Well, now let's talk about the uh, Optimus robot. This is your personal assistant robot. They were in attendance. They were serving drinks. They were interacting with guests. Watching it. Did you ever see Westworld? Yeah. Yeah. Looked like a scene right out of Westworld. And uh, here he is, uh, Elon, that is, talking about Optimus Robot. But fundamentally, at scale, uh, the Optimus Robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus Robot for, I think, probably twenty to $30,000. Wow. Long term. No. Wait. So, and, wait. And, and what can it do? It can, it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, babysit your kids. It can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks. No. Um, Whatever you can think of. No. It will do. Yes. And, no. yeah, it's going to be awesome. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, it is. And I, I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. <laughs> okay, let's let lazy rich people that have the money to spend $20,000 on a personal assistant robot do that. But, no, when they I've seen iRobot. When they flip the switch and they all turn red and they take over, you lazy effers are all in for it. All right. I won't because we'll I won't have one. We'll I'll be see. Will Smith out there on the front line. Not happening. <laughs> uh, hey, speaking of iRobot, Elon Musk and Skynet, get on your SpaceX when it crashes. Alex Proyas, uh, the director of iRobot, weighed in, posted on X, Hey, Elon, can I have my designs back? Because the Optimus robot does look, look very like, much like iRobot. Yeah. But you know what? All of those robots that I see look alike. They all have that same look, movement, everything. Yeah, no, you know. I've seen this movie too many times. I'm not being a part of it. <laughs> not being a part of it. <laughs> like Doug said, and watch, it'll rip off your wiener and make you a eunuch if you're not careful. Exactly. Robotic not, Game of Thrones. It's not a savage. Yeah. <laughs> we it's just summer sausage. Till Told the, you. Till the switch flips from blue to red. <laughs> now, the three things you need to know before you go. Well, we could get our first real freeze of the season tonight. The National Weather Service has issued a freeze warning from 2 a.m. to 9 a.m. tomorrow. Forecasters warning homeowners to protect their tender plants yes. and in-ground sprinkler <laughs> systems. Look for Thick Rick to have his uh, military sleeping bag out, sleeping next to his Mexican haze all night long. You know, I got a big umbrella over top of it right now because it's supposed to rain this morning. And um, it's it's a patio umbrella. It's not like one you carry. And uh, I could, I was going to hang black sheets all the way around that and put a space heater in there. And then my wife's like, and you're going to go to bed with the space heater running outdoors in the cold? And I'm like, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Probably not. But I'm, gonna, I'm still going to cover them. Of course you are. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> well, the vice president, the current vice president and Democratic nod for the presidential candidate Kamala Harris is going to sit down with Joe Rogan. Uh, supposedly it's in the works. Uh, Harris campaign officials met with Rogan's team this week about a possible appearance on the podcast, but nothing has been confirmed. Rogan's show is the most popular podcast in the U.S. Harris could use the Rogan interview to build support among male voters, as several polls indicate former President Trump is leading in that demographic. According to Spotify, the Joe Rogan experience had a 14.5 million followers as of last March. Trump has indicated Monday he plans to go on Rogan's podcast before Election Day. So both of them on the Rogan podcast. That could be interesting. She is doing Fox News. She's also doing Fox News, which is a bold move. Yeah, Brett Baer, uh, Thursday at 6 p.m. I was uh, I was kind of shocked to hear she was going to sit down with Brett. Yep, it's a little bit of a uh, step out of bounds for her. So we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, She's no, a world class liar. All right, Donald, calm down. Calm down. No big winner in last night's Powerball drawing, which is good because I forgot to play. So that makes sense. Uh, the top prize for tomorrow night will swell to four hundred eight million dollars. The cash opt-in is a <laughs> a, me- a measly. Hundred ninety six million. I mean, I, I don't know how you can even make ends meet on that. Probably yeah, shouldn't. They're play. gonna keep almost half of it. I mean, I'll tell you what. I will. You don't play. I'll play to save you the embarrassment of losing. That way, you know. Yeah, I keep saying I'm not doing it anymore because I'm never gonna win. And I always think I could be the one <laughs> when it gets up high. I'm like, what if I'm the one? Yeah, I don't know if I was one hundred ninety six. I mean, I'll just spend, spend most of my time looking at the over two hundred million I didn't get to claim. It's just really cool. <laughs> It's horrible. Anyway, those are your three things. Falling in reverse on the morning blitz, seven after seven on a Tuesday morning. Kelly Quinn's out. It's Dick, Rick, and Lewis. Thank you for waking up with us. Cold, chilly this morning. 
And it's going to be even colder tonight, but we will see mostly scattered, cloudy, overcastness all day today. 53 is the high, so you might need a hoodie today. Uh, I feel yeah. like being a Karen this morning. Yeah? Dude, we're on the road earlier in the morning than everybody else. You are starting to drive me crazy because it's becoming a common thing. I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> when you sit at the light and you're at the arrow and you're not moving because you're on your phone. Oh. And yeah. It drives me insane. You just honk. I do. And then they get mad at you. Okay, you're right. It's my fault that you were on your phone impeding the progress of traffic. So you're right. I'm a Richard. Because <laughs> you were Richarding around on your phone when you should have been driving. My bad. Yeah. yeah. Supposed to. I apologize. Supposed to accept that. I should buy you okay. a coffee for your incompetence. <laughs> And my inconvenience. And my inconvenience. <laughs> You're right. 100%. All right. Well, at least you weren't sitting by uh, this lady on Frontier Airlines. Yeah, another day, another passenger meltdown. This time, a uh, customer claimed she was the president after the pilot refused to turn the plane around so she could get her forgotten phone. Uh, the whole freak out was caught on camera during the lead up to a flight from San Diego to Las Vegas and shared on TikTok Sunday. Um, you could see that, I mean, this woman's going ballistic on the crew. Uh, naturally, the presidential outburst was so absurd that passengers couldn't help but crack up. And uh, that just cued her to go absolutely unhinged on them. And here is this wonderful audio. If I was white in a suit, you would stop the f***ing train. Laugh now. I am the president. Laugh now. 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 Yes, I need to get off this plane And I'm going to tell you straight up Don't you ever come against nobody because of their skin color again You had enough time I've seen Frontier do illegal stuff several times I've been riding for the last eight years <laughs> Don't tell me You had enough time to stop that Tell the pilot to not go You just released him from the bank I saw it out the window I know it within my heart You called him and said that's a lie from the pit of hell. Where you get it from? I am an affirmed sovereign ruler here in the government. Seven continents I own. Seven continents. <laughs> Keep laughing. Watch your ass be right on the boat. We shipping people out <laughs> just for a nice proof of expedition. <laughs> what comes around goes around. It's time now. Keep laughing. Watch what happens. You'll be expired just like your battery on your watch. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Seven continents I own. Seven continents I own. That's a lie from the pit of hell. <laughs> That's a lie from the pit of hell. Damn right. I want that. Oh, my gosh. To use that. Oh, yeah. Oh. I am the president of this whole damn country. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is quite a world we live in. Oh, my gosh, man. Seriously. What she want them to do? Stop the plane and turn it around? I I don't know, and I, and and it looks like they didn't even make her get off. And I don't know what race didn't have anything to do with it. She was demanding they turn the plane around. It had nothing to do with race. I don't know why she took it there. But that's uh, true because you can't really. I mean, once the plane <laughs> is in motion, you can't really just turn it around. You have to have a really good reason. For yeah, that well, to and happen. I mean, they weren't in air, but they were on the runway, pre- ready to go. And she's expecting them to go back so she can get her phone. And, um, yeah, we don't know if she stayed on the flight, got kicked off, if it was delayed or anything. I mean, you know, being without your phone, you do run the risk of some real catastrophe happening. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The pit of hell, (laughs) Lewis. It's from the pit of hell. Oh, this is true. (laughs) Oh, you know, people are just something else these days. It's the morning blitz, 721 Thick Rick. Lewis Kelly Quinn is out for a couple days. She will be back on Thursday. She just texted me and said, Tell Lewis not to worry, I'll be there Thursday to kick his ass at Think Fast. She did not. Yeah, she did. I was gonna tell her, I was gonna text her and tell her to have a good day. I might not now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just stirring crap. I thought so. She doesn't talk to us when she's not here. No. <laughs> Hell, she barely talks to us when she is here. So I did yesterday. I was cruising around yesterday because I had some running around to do. 
And I did want to go in. There was a there's a I passed a Bath and Body Works. I kind of wanted to go in and see if the Clandle was there, just to see if it was on shelves. Oh, like if they've already removed it. Or yeah, anything? and see if it was like see one physically. It's so dumb, man. I, if you I guys know. haven't seen it, we talked about it yesterday. It had a candle and it had half a snowflake on it. It did. And the points of the snowflakes had two little holes in each one, and so people said it looked like a KKK hood. Right. So they're calling it the Clandal, and so Bath and Body Works has now removed this candle because of the bad press, and, I'm, and they apologized as if they did something wrong, and it was clearly not intended as that. It was a, It's just a snowflake. It even right. they even kind of look like alien heads. They look like little. Well, well, of course, not that we know what an alien head looks like, but only what we've seen. You right, I mean? the pictures of what people depict. Right. Okay, so it kind of reminded me the story. I was filling in for a morning show one day. And this was years ago. Um, the morning host was out of town, so I ended up working with the rest of the show. And they had back in the day, you had what we called a stunt guy, which was just a dude yeah. that you know. And ours was Spoon, so we're like Spoon. Yeah. It's national. Say hi to everybody. You can go say hi. You can go out and say hi to people, or you could, you know, stand there and let people throw food at you. Like we just, you know, those yeah. those yeah, were options. We've had a few of those. We okay. had one. We had one we called Twat Waffle. <laughs> so we used to send Spoon out to do like all these outlandish things, and Halloween came upon us. So we came in in the morning, and I it did not dawn on me until it was too late for this to happen. But we bring Spoon in in the morning, and I'm like. <laughs> It's Halloween. You going trick or treating night? No. Why? I'm like, you know what your problem is, Spoon. You're letting all these kids beat you to the punch because they're starting at six o'clock at night. You need to start at six o'clock in the morning. That way, you get a jump start. You get all the candy before the kids even get out because they'll be on their way to school. And he's like, "That's a great idea." Yeah. Wait, how old was he? Oh, he's thirty. So <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so I'm like, you need a costume. All right, I'm gonna get a costume. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, you get a costume, and then you let us know when you're out. So he gets a costume, and he goes out in the neighborhood. And I'm like, all right, I'm like, you got your costume? And he's like, yeah. So he's in a neighborhood. Mind you, he picks not the best part of town to do this in, but he does. I'm like, what's your costume? I'm a happy ghost. I'm like, that sounds great. It didn't, I swear to God, it did not dawn on me until all of a sudden the news is calling because there are reports of Klansmen out Oh no! In neighbor in neighborhoods, oh, no. going door to door, <laughs> because his happy ghost oh. was a white sheet. <laughs> He's making the news. He made the news. This is the day I filled in, mind you. It wasn't even ah. my show. Okay, congratulations, Wait, right? <sighs> So he's literally like we had the new the police call. You guys got a guy in a clan out there? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> That's the best. So needless to say, he's like, I think people are yelling at me. I'm like, just run. <laughs> <laughs> and don't come back here. <laughs> Oh, my God. But I had no idea. He's like, I'm a happy ghost. That's a great idea. <laughs> all of a sudden, like, the calls start coming in. <laughs> News. <laughs> so, yeah, needless to say, what started off as a cute idea <laughs> went severely in a different direction. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Needless to say, that was the last time we ever got a jump on trick or treat in the morning. <laughs> Some things are best if they're done in the normal operation of <laughs> hours and whatnot. Uh, Ron said, um, snowflakes seeing racism in snowflakes? That's hilarious. That's funny. <laughs> and Nikki Newland said, uh, Clandle nearly made me spit out my coffee from laughing so hard. I'm we can't take credit for that. They named it. We didn't. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, Ron makes a great point. <laughs> Snowflake scene racism and snowflakes. I mean, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That was pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, man, that is that is a uh, a great trick or treat story. Yeah, you know, I love it. Hey, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, uh, Fred Klett, comedian. Yeah. You ever heard of Fred? Yeah. 
Oh, my gosh. You talked about Halloween with a big family. I got eight brothers and one sister. I grew up in a family of ten kids. Anyone come from a larger family than that? Large family, you have to adapt to survive. Everyone, parents included. My dad adapted. He learned how to have fun with us. He used to love taking us to the store. He'd only say one thing. Spread out. They can't watch all of us. (laughs) Most kids, their favorite holiday is Christmas. Not when you're from a large family because it might not be your turn to get a present that year. (laughs) A large family, your favorite holiday is Halloween because it is incentive-based. If you hustle, you can stock up for the year. (laughs) Halloween comes around, all you know is you're going to run for as hard as you can, as long as you can. A lot of kids try to tell you, oh, Halloween ends at 10 p.m. Wrong. Halloween ends when people quit answering the door. Yes. Halloween night, the the guy that puts a bowl full of candy on his front porch with a note. Please take one. We not only dumped the bowl, we took the bowl. <laughs> we took the note because you want to show other kids you got to read this. This is funny. <laughs> Motley Crue and their ode to strip clubs. Girls, girls, girls on the morning blitz. <laughs> Stick Rick and Lewis. Good morning. And that was the song you were listening for, by the way, for Sarah Silberman tickets. And Jason Fairchild got those. Jason from East Liberty up by Mad River Mountain. Nice. Scored those tickets. We'll have more tomorrow. We have another show to announce coming up uh, just before 10 o'clock. We do. We'll give away tickets. All right. If I say body count to you, do you know what I'm speaking about? Yeah, it means we have to change the music. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I kind of do. Your body count is something you want to be honest about. Is it? Do you? I mean, I. it's different how this works. I mean, if you've killed some people, you really should tell your partner about it. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. Your body count is one of those things where I feel like... it's. This is where the um, double standards really fit in. You know, it really come to life. Yeah. Because I'm going to say this completely hypothetically. A guy's body count could be like 30. I'm just using that number. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting down with your significant other and you guys and the body count discussion comes up and she goes, I'd really like to know what your body... And you say, 30. She's going to go like, okay. (laughs) Even if the response from her is a single digit, it's too high. She's going to be like, three, counting you. And you're going to, and the dude will be like, three, huh? You're like 35, three. (laughs) Man, well, I guess that's how you were raised. All right. (laughs) You know what the general rule is, right? Like, whatever a guy says, minus 15, is you can divide it by three. Whatever the girl says, you multiply it times three. Okay. The body count. Now, I do believe a guy has a different answer for his girl than he does for his buddies. For sure. You know. What about you? 72? Yeah, right. So (laughs) when he tells his friends, I think that's the number you divide by three. But when he tells his girlfriend, that you probably need to multiply him by three as well. You know, because to his his friends, like you said, it's 30. Right. To his girlfriend, it's three. You know what I mean? (laughs) Right. So, um... Do you know what the average number is? Like the true average number. What do you think it is? 10. 14. Okay. 14. Uh, 26% of sexually active adults in relationships have not admitted the real body count to their partner. Dustin said my wife and I have been completely honest with each other about body counts and all signs point to we are pretty much both whores. (laughs) But I guess practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. But I appreciate their honesty with each other. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, guys look at that differently. They really do. As far as what I'm saying about the number is true. Like a, a girl could say three, and the guy would say, "Oh, oh well, that's been that." that yeah, he'd call, okay, his, that, he'd, he'd call his friend. Three people, dude. You believe that? Three. 
Yeah, you, when you talk about the double standard, yeah, I remember like in high school. Right. You know, if a girl was with a lot of guys, well, she was a hoe. But if a guy was with it, you know. Yeah, you, buddy. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, what is that? So I understood. I, I completely understood why that bothered so many girls. Right. You know. I get it. A uh, survey of 2,000 Americans also found that the average respondent had been int- intimate, as I said, with 14 people. However, not all of these experiences have been pleasant. <laughs> 28% say it's been at least a month since they've had good sex. Not sex, but good sex. And there is a big difference. There's a very big difference. Um, open and honest communication about sexual needs is essential for a thriving relationship, said one sex expert. Uh, remember, there's no shame in exploring your needs and discovering new dimensions of pleasure. Nick says, one for me at 40 years. I feel both shame and pride. Uh, nonsense, Nick. Cassandra was a hoe. Mine is a lot higher than my husband. He knows that. We don't find ne- it necessary to talk about it because it doesn't matter. Well, look, you think you 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 think that you want to know. You don't. Right. But you, you you probably really don't. It's not a discussion you need to have. The past is the past. Everybody's got one. Everybody's been with who they've been with, and you can't change that. You know, if you can't deal with it, then you need to make sure you marry a virgin. Unless you get the person that was super freaky in their past... And, and now they're not. And they're tame. <laughs> <laughs> what? What did I do wrong? Right. Then you're like, how come all the stuff that I used to, I used to hear stories about you. <laughs> That's why I asked you right. out. <laughs> now none of them. You don't do that anymore. <laughs> God, I thought you were with three people. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Oh, man, I don't know. Yeah, but you think you want to know until you know. And then you're like, what did I do? Why did I find that out? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Right. You know? Um, I, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, you know, it's a thing. It's definitely a thing. Um, one in five people are embarrassed by their body count number. So 20% of people are embarrassed because they're hoes. Uh, yeah, but sometimes you're embarrassed because you set a goal and you just didn't reach it. Well, 20% wish their number was higher. Uh, 25% wish their number was lower. I I imagine those are the same people that are embarrassed by their account. Uh, There is a good chance you'll never be asked. 62% of people said they don't want to know how many people their partner has been with. Then that's, I I don't want to know. I don't need to know. I read the Will Chamberlain book. It changed my life, gave me goals, (laughs) something to strive for. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I feel like I still have time. Especially yeah. now. <laughs> Nothing but time. <laughs> All right. Now, this one, this is so weird to me. Uh, there is a girl who says that, she, here was her statement. She said she used to lie when her doctor would ask her her body count. And I'm like, the doctor knows. The doctor asks? My doctor's never asked me that, but then I don't know if that's... She like, I don't know if that was... She didn't say if it was her gynecologist or what it was. She, she just said, so, I lie when the doc... Three with a smile. And the doc's like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> you better add some zeros. <laughs> What's well, really not... Is it really... Is it about the number of people or the number of times? Which is, I, you I, know... I don't you know, know what I mean? So... But I, I'm, I was shocked. So I was just curious. Any, any women listening? Has has your doctor ever asked you your body count? I, mean, I feel a, like that would go different for dudes, well, too. I, if your doctor's like, so I need 17, dude, just last week. <laughs> well, is there, I mean, is there a medical reason for a doctor asking a, a woman that? I don't know. But is it, I, just cur- I just blew my mind that maybe, a doctor asks a woman, how many men have you been with? Maybe he's curious. Well, if, yeah. the numbers, if this number's in a certain range, I have a chance. <laughs> oh, God, stop. It's doctors, man. We can't have oh, like, that. You don't think that happens? No, it can't happen. But you don't it think can't, it does? No, it can't. But it's you not, don't think it I'm does? I'm not allowing myself to believe uh, it does. You're no. living in a blue, a blue I can't, gra- no. grass. We can't have that, world. Lewis. We cannot have that. That can't be happening. If it's happening, it needs to stop. That doctor's going home. Dear penthouse, this kind of thing never happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. But seriously, I would like to know that if if a doctor's ever asked uh, any of you out there. Got smack on the morning blitz, 748. Thick Rick and Lewis Kelly Quinn out today. She will be back on Thursday. So it's a hot Tuesday where we're discussing body counts. 
Wait. Oh, you, you gotta do. give him that. Cook, cook. <laughs> That's the best hawk to ever. Uh, you brought up the doctor asking about your body count. Ashlyn says they ask how many partners, female or male, to test for HIV and STDs. It also helps if you do have an STD. That way they know how many people they have to reach out to to make sure that oh, it doesn't spread. wow. Hmm. All right. Yeah, Emily said gynecologists will ask. How many recently, or if more than one for certain medical purposes, but them to ask in general is invasive for no reason. Susan says that if she's in the swinging lifestyle, then that might be why the doctor would ask you. I wonder if you're the, if you're in that lifestyle. Girl, no, no, this girl's definitely not in the swinging lifestyle. Well, if you are, though, do you just wear the pineapple pin like into the doctor's office? That way you don't need to ask. They just know. You know what I mean? Like a little, like a, like a beacon. Right. Just kind of <laughs> lets you know. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Uh, yes, I've been asked a body count by a doctor as a female when I went to get birth control. Okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. Uh, Joe said, I'm a dude, probably not applicable, but my bo- my doctors asked me if I was active, but never for a number. That seems like a bit much. Well, yeah, I can uh, I can imagine that acting it, asking if you're sexually active, that makes sense to me. You don't want the fist bump of approval from your doctor? <laughs> 27. Yeah. Get out there. Get back in the game, son. <laughs> Set some goals. Uh, Mary says, I'm 50. I've never been asked by my gynecologist. Yeah, I don't know. That's Now, I was... I remember dating a girl. Um, this was a while ago. I was just out of college. She had an asthma attack, and we took her to the hospital, and it was the um, ER doctor... And he and she was pissed because he asked her, "Are you sexually active?" And she was kind of like, "The hell does that have to do with my asthma attack?" Mm. Gosh, she found that kind of offensive, which I can understand that. It probably didn't help that I was in the background. Hell yeah, she is. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you are a pig. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. He's talking about body counts, uh, Mike says, my wife knows I was a whore and she was a good girl. She was only with three before me. Yeah, that's what she tells you, Mike. Three? Remember, you got to multiply that times three, so it's really nine. All right, three, huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the number you kept coming back to, Louis. Guess that's how you were raised. Uh, Ron said a doctor may ask if he sees something that could be abuse. Mm. Just making sure. Only thing he could that think That makes of. sense. That would, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nikki said, none of my docs have ever asked me that. Uh, someone said, I don't believe there's a medical reason why as a doctor needs to know how many people a female's been with unless that doctor's intentions are impure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, Buck says, I think it's wild that people can actually remember all of their past partners. Well, Buck, you know, if you've been with like 50 or 60, maybe you don't. <laughs> I, I, this is going to sound creepy and weird. A friend of mine has a photo album. I kid you not. I don't oh know God. if he still does, but a friend of, of mine had a photo album of every girl. I know that's creepy and weird. And no, it's not me. That friend is not a quote thing. That's a legit person that had that did that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, they typically only ask again. Yeah, if you've tested positive for what something. If- that made that all, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's it's an. I mean, it is an interesting conversation. All seriousness, it is an interesting conversation. I think it's a conversation that you know, I'm kind of with you. Like, you don't really want to know because the past is the past. But I feel like it is a question that you probably should be. If you're really serious to the point where you're talking about exchanging rings and whatnot, you should probably be honest about that at some point in time. Well, you can either be. I I, again, I. I don't think you want to know, or maybe is it going to be a deal breaker kind of thing, but. Uh, I can understand where people would demand each other get tested before sure. getting married. For I, sure. I, I, I could see that. I think that's acceptable. Uh, and Colt said, <laughs> Colt's got the best text of the day. Oh, yeah. I think everybody should come with a uh, mileage odometer so we know what kind of mess we're getting into. I said, too, you got to know if you got to put a new clutch in the thing or not. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you want to know. Oh, man. I But that blew my mind when uh, I heard that the doctor had asked that question. You know? Yeah. 
I mean, I see the, I can see, I can see the abuse. Que- it would be asked if it was abuse question, but I don't think that would be like the standard question you would ask for. You know, just anything, because a lot of times that doesn't really matter, right? You know what I mean? If yeah, I'm in yeah. there because I've got, you know, a headache, I don't need to. I don't need you to know how many partners I've had. Uh, Denise said every time she has a gynecologist appointment for an exam, just like an annual, they ask, "Are you sexually active?" Gotcha. So, and that makes sense. That's the kind of doctor a, a, a gyno is, you know. So that makes sense to me. I uh, am. Yeah, well, I get it. Uh, Nikki said, "Never has any of her doctors asked me that question." Uh, we did get a few texts uh, from guys who. Uh, Say they're just not getting sex anymore kind of deal. And um, I, I'm going to be honest, and you may not like to hear it, but are you doing it good? Are you, be, are you, are you selfish in the bedroom? Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you are selfish in the bedroom, you're, it's, it's gonna, that's what's going to happen. Well, I'm a selfish lover, I'll be honest. Well, then that's why you're not getting any. <laughs> uh, you've got you've to be a giving, a giving man in the bedroom or she's going to stop wanting it. It's just that simple. And if you don't like it, the truth hurts. I'm sorry. It feels bad if the doctor's and, like, are you sexually active? Not anymore, doc. Thanks for bringing up a sore spot. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, bud. And now, All right, I'm three things you need to know before you go. <laughs> Whoops, I put my normal and nope in front of my news, and that's not going to work because we're not there yet. (laughs) Uh, Former President Trump is pledging to bring interest rates down if he's elected in November. Speaking at a town hall outside Philadelphia Monday, Trump said he was in the White House when he was there. Interest rates were at 2%. He said at 2%, there was plenty of money for everybody. The Republican presidential nominee added there would be no tax on Social Security benefits for seniors. The Columbus Zoo director will spend up the former Columbus Zoo director will spend up to seven years behind bars. Tom yeah. Stauff was sentenced yesterday after pleading guilty in July to theft, conspiracy, fraud, and tampering with records. He'll also have to pay more than three hundred thousand dollars in criminal damages, in addition to a four hundred the four hundred thousand he already paid back to the zoo. Prosecutors say that Stauff was at the center of a scheme to use more than two million dollars of zoo money for personal benefits. Dude, do you know how many times he's brought animals in here? Mm-hmm. I'm, I was shocked, just shocked by that one. Yeah, that was whole. That whole thing was just, mm. you know, you hate to see people that you think are good people not be good people. Yeah, maybe he's just desperate. I don't know. I don't know. Well, speaking of desperate, Columbus-based Big Lots keeps closing stores. The company filed for bankruptcy and is closing more than 500 of its stores nationwide. In the latest rounds of closings, some Central Ohio stores are listed, including uh, Schrock Road in Westerville, West Fifth Avenue in Grandview, and Sawmill Road in Dublin. The company lost a quarter of a billion dollars in the second quarter of this year. <sighs> Man. Nobody shopping a bit. All those are starting to go away. Yeah, the big box stores? Really? There's a few. I mean, you got a few. Are you, are, are you just mean all the big lots? Yeah. Uh, well, no, just the big lots type stores. Mm-hmm. Because I think people are buying everything online. You're not seeing as many people going out to any yeah. of those stores anymore. Yeah, because, I mean, you can check their store for a price and then check Amazon and check. Right. Uh, you know what, though? And I'm finding more and more better deals away from Amazon. Yeah, me too. I mean, sometimes the best one's on Amazon, but other times it's not. No. So. And you are, you know, kind of at the limit of what somebody wants to sell on Amazon. There are a lot of places that are starting to avoid selling on Amazon so they can go back to getting people to come back into their stores to get something, which yeah. might be the way you have to go. Those are your three things. It's the Morning Blitz with Thick Rick and Lewis just after 8 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. Uh, clouds, some scattered showers and cold today, 53 for the high. Uh, drops down tonight, and then we start to see the sun uh, coming back in the next couple of days, yes. and it'll warm up a little bit. So yeah, it looks like it's a gorgeous weekend. Yeah, it does. So there's that. That's always good. Yeah. Uh, Kelly's out for a couple of days. She's back on Thursday. Um, so my Cowboys kind of suck this year. You know, but so. you didn't think that was going to be the case. Well, I mean, I didn't think they were going to win a Super Bowl either. I'm not delusional. Uh, you know, they lost a few key players, and they've, they've lost a lot to injury. I mean, some of the best players on the team are out hurt, 
half their defense. Six out of 11 starters out hurt. And they haven't been able to run the ball for about three years now, I think. It's been yeah. about three years since they've been able to run the ball at all. So they're very one-dimensional on offense. And it all showed. You know, they got, what was it, 47-9? to nine. They got beat by Detroit on, on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but here was the thing. at uh, You know, Dallas always plays on Thanksgiving. They're always the afternoon game. It's the most watched regular season of the game, regular season game of the year every year in the NFL. Right. And they always have a halftime show. You know, they have some artists perform, a, you know, a mini concert yeah. at halftime. And so during this game at halftime, when they're down, I, I think they were down like 34 to 6 at the half. And all of a sudden, uh, somebody was at the stadium to announce the halftime show for Thanksgiving, and she appeared on the big screen. Laney Wilson here, training to be an honorary Dallas Cowboys cheerleader for the Salvation Army's Red Kettle Kickoff Halftime Show. Tune in to watch me and a special guest this Thanksgiving on Fox. We're going to kick off the giving season right. Why are you yelling? <laughs> well, why is she yelling at me? <laughs> I, you know, I feel bad for her. Well, she didn't do anything, right? But yeah, fans were like, "What?" <laughs> they're you know they're looking at a thirty four six football game. They don't give a damn about Thanksgiving right now. No, and I think for her it was like an exciting thing because she's chosen to be you know, sure. Yeah, last year it was Dolly Parton, right? But uh, yeah, so some of the reactions that came flying in: uh, Can she run the ball or stop the run? Because that's what we need. Uh, another one said, uh, if the special guest can't call offensive plays, I don't want to hear it. Another one, are y'all trolling us right now? <laughs> I'm like, and I felt every one of these. Uh, no one cares. This team sucks. And uh, you guys are currently losing 34 to 6. Read the effing room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel bad. This happens too. Like, I feel bad for like the Bengals when the Bengals are having a bad game and their social media posts something. Like, they'll have one good play right. and a loss. <laughs> Look at the way Jamar Chase caught that. I'm like, dude, you know when you posted that, this is what was going to happen because then the people, well, they still lost 37 to 7, so a right. lot of good that did. You know, you. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just, but that was a good one. Read the room, you know. It's like this is. I mean, it's just a bad. You should have done it before the game started. Yeah. Oh, you for know. Sure. Then you have nothing to worry about. You get everybody, and everybody's excited, and it's all great. And then when they start losing, that's totally done and over with. Yeah, but somebody looked at that schedule that didn't really realize how good the Detroit Lions actually were last year. They didn't? I mean, they took us to the wire at home last year. That's what year. I'm saying. But someone looked at that schedule and went, oh, Lions, that'll be a stat builder game. That'll be a perfect halftime to announce oh. the Thanksgiving show. I don't know why they thought that. Boy, I did feel bad for Hutchinson. Yeah. Man, bad, bad broken leg. Bad broken leg. Horrible. He's out for, you know, this season, depending on well, how Well, is goes. he? They, they, they don't know. They did surgery. They said he's definitely lost for the season. He's oh, he season. is? Because they said there was no timeline on they his did return. This, they did the surgery right after the right. injury, and he's in Dallas for a while, but by the time he rehabs and everything else, I mean... Ah, uh, we'll see. Yeah, the Lions defense is going to miss him. For but sure. If they can score like that, though, it won't matter. You know what I mean? This is true. <laughs> so you'll, uh, if you are a Cowboys fan, and I know Rick is, <laughs> on our Facebook wall, there uh, might be something yeah, that you want to yeah. purchase <laughs> just in case, you know, you're taking your lady out for Sweetest Day. This might be the perfect fragrance to set the proper mood. Yeah, okay. Dak, can, Dak didn't give up 49 points to the Lions. I just wanted to say that. You can check out that on our Facebook wall. It's the Morning Blitz. It's time for another edition of Normal or No. I didn't have to cough until we went on the air, and then all of a sudden I, like, I could feel it. It's <laughs> A23, Thick and Lewis. Kelly Quinn is out. She'll be back on Thursday. Uh, since I went first earlier, I'll let you go first this time around. All right. I did want to mention uh, our local ghost resident celebrity, Neil Parks, uh, is in studio with us. And uh, we're going to talk to him about his new book and some haunts, some stuff around oh, let's Ohio. Give him, let's give him all of my time. Well, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I, just, I told him, I said, since he's here, he can like weigh in right. on normal or no. Yeah, for sure. You know, did right? you discuss it with him? No, he, he, just made, sitting, he just made his executive sitting, decision. You were sitting right here. We were talking about it. Stop it. All right. I'll go first. No, it is good to see Neil again. Yes, welcome Likewise. in, Neil. Welcome in. It's been, yes, it's been a year. I can't believe it. Uh, all right, so here's the first one. Normal or nope? Putting socks on before pants. Now, I have done this my entire life. 
I will put on my socks before I put on my pants. But I've noticed my wife, you know, here and there, where she's got her pants on and then she's putting socks on. And I don't think that's wrong. But then I'm wondering, am I weird? Only in the morning for me. Only in the morning what? Well, you sleep with your socks socks on. So wait, are you wearing the same socks to work that you slept in? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Like tube socks? No, like get, athletic get right up socks. on the mic. Like you know, athletic you socks. Any socks. I mean, to me, yeah. it's easier if I have my socks on already before I put my pants on. Then they just slide so, right yeah, over, right. and I but don't have to pull them up under my pants. And- if I get out of the shower, I will put my pants on first, and then I will put my socks on. But if I go to bed at night, like I sleep in socks. So I have the socks that I slept in. They did not go outside, so they're not dirty. Ish. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Valid. You will, you, but when you get out of the shower, you put your pants on before your socks. Yeah. All right. What do you think, Neil? I always do socks before pants because okay. that's easier for Good. me. You lose. I mean, if we're going, one. if we're Sorry. going in order, I'm putting on my underwear first. You know? Well, yes, of course. Well, the yes, kind that's, of, the, that's the, the animal order. print kind that's that come the in order. the tube because that's underwear, what I go with. Underwear, socks, pants, shirt. That's the order. That is underwear, the order. That is the order that my life works with. Underwear, <laughs> first layer shirt. Pants. What? <laughs> first layer shirt. Deodorant first or after you put your shirt on? Ah, uh, deodorant first. Okay. See, with when I'm wearing darker colors, I always like get the deodorant smudge on your back that you don't notice till the middle of the day. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I still deodorant first. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and then I try to be careful. But in the morning, my socks are already on, so that's one less step. Yeah, but you're sleeping in socks and then wearing them all day. My bed's not filled with dirt. Are, so you putting? Are you putting new socks on before bed? Yeah. So After shower I shower, at I shower okay. at night. Yeah, I put on a right. fresh pair of socks that I sleep in. I get up. Those are the socks that I will wear today. I will probably wear them for my workout today, and then they will go into the dirty laundry after that, and I will change up. I don't think that's good for your feet to wear okay, socks. Okay, well, to my bed. feet didn't ask your opinion. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna get rot foot like in Vietnam. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't, think I don't know. You act it. like I sleep in a like swamp, and then I go to work. It just seems so weird sleeping in socks. My wife goes to bed with socks on, but then she wakes up without socks on. And like I like I've said before, every couple of weeks I'll go to the foot of the bed and I'll find a dozen socks Sam, on her side. Sam <laughs> My said, "What kids are notorious for that?" Yeah. Sam said, what kind of psychopath sleeps with socks on? I do, Sam. Yes, he Because, does. one, like, <laughs> my feet get cold first, so I got to have warm feet. And when the dogs do what they do, sometimes the blankets don't cooperate with the way you want them to. And if I have to get up and fight someone, I got to have socks That's on. That's right. I remember you saying right. that. Now. Traction. Yeah. I'm already sleeping naked. It's going to be a bit of a well, distraction, but I have to have a good grip. Too, so you can shock them when yes. you grab them. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mike said, Kelly's voice sure got awfully deep. Who's the third party? That is Neil, Neil Parks, Parks uh, our local ghost hunter, finder, author. He's just he's our Halloween dude, man, our Kelly expert. Has a cold. We're gonna we're gonna talk to him about ghosts and stuff coming up here in just a few. Uh, Robert from Mansfield said putting the socks on first helps the pants slide on easier. Plus, I'm like Lewis, I sleep with socks too. Thank you, Robert from Mansfield. All right, Christine said it depends on what pants. Jeans, socks go on before. Leggings, socks go on after. I guess because you pull the le- the socks over, over the, the leggings. leggings. Yeah, girls are doing that now. All right. All right. What about you when you put your cowboy boots on? Do you put the socks on first so you can pull your boots over your pants? <laughs> All right, what do you got? <laughs> Jeez. Um, uh, let's see. Normal or no? Packing random things you might use to survive if your plane crashes on an island. Like, oh, know. so if you get stranded so from a plane crash? Someplace. Yeah, you every d- time. Me too. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I no, I never. Of course, I don't. I have. I haven't been on planes much. One trip at Christmas that stranded me overnight. I spent Christmas Eve one night in the Denver airport. And ever since then, I have changed the way I have flown because I had checked my bag and I had nothing with me in my over my carry on except for my laptop. And that was it. So I had nothing. And I was there for I was in that airport for 19 and a half hours. Okay, so you're talking about being stranded in an airport. So I but now I've been like, what if I get stranded anywhere? What if my plane has to land and I checked my or I didn't have enough stuff in my bag? So even though I always have stuff in my checked bag, in my carry on bag, I will have whatever essentials you can get in there for stuff. I'm I'm not going to call that not normal. I've never done it. And now you got me thinking about it because I mean, you know, it's always better to be prepared. Completely. Yeah. You always want to overpack. <laughs> yeah. 
I'd rather be more prepared than not right. prepared. Uh, Dr. Sh- Dennis just gave me a great idea that I should use a third sock just to, oh, you know, in geez. case of a Good oh, call, okay. Dr. Dennis. Yeah, Thank right. you. Sock for the footies. Yeah, a little footy. Um, <laughs> I did know. We're talking a tube sock. Uh, Mike, Mike, Mike Funk says he also sleeps in socks. Sean in Newark says, Lewis, I wear my hospital socks to bed. Good traction. Dude, there. I love hospital Ooh. socks. I steal hospital socks every time I've had surgery, and I had a coworker of mine from Indy. She bought me hospital socks because she knows how much I like. little grip on the bottom of them. It. You can run in those. You can. These things are awesome. The hospital is not good for much, but they are great for those socks. <laughs> Robert from Mansfield's with both of us. He said putting the socks on first helps the pants slide on easier, but I'm like Lewis and sleep with my socks on. See? So he's with both of us. Uh, he, was with me, he was with me when I read that text earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. It's the morning blitz. 838 with Dick and Lewis. Kelly Quinn is out today. She will be back on Thursday. Congratulations going out to Mike Funk. Man, he has been listening forever, texts in every day, all day, never, ever wins, and he finally did. He said he's been trying to win Sonic tickets and Rock on the Range tickets for over a decade, and he never did, and he finally did. That's awesome. Yep. Very happy for the dude. Mm. Should be a good time. All right. Our pal Neil Parks is in. He's got a lot of stuff going on. It is that time of year. Got to get Neil kind of music going here. I was enjoying murder was the case that they gave me, though. Oh, you know. (laughs) Can't go wrong with Snoop. D-O-double-G. So, you have a new book. I do. A new book and actually a new comic book on top of that. The comic looks really cool, dude. You brought this in the first thing. It's the first thing you showed us. It looks legit. It's well done. Like, from cover to cover, I was flipping through. The artwork looks good. Then I found out you did all the artwork. You even put little, like... uh, Old style fifties ads in the middle of the comic. Like, it's just really cool. It's a very well done piece of art. The uh, cover and the ads in the very first comic that's in it were those were done by Jared Depew, owner of Mill City Apparel, Mill City USA, yeah. in Chillicothe. Nice. It was an idea that he and I came up with last year around March, maybe, to do a graphic novel based on a shirt that he created called Chiller Coffee. And that's great. The Chiller Coffee Creeper. And, yeah. And we're like, you know what? That This would be an insane idea to take stories I've written and do cartoons about them. Yeah, comic comics. Books. Yeah. And he and I both have dabbled in that arena for years, so we combined our styles, and he made it happen. He has the equipment and uh, the... Uh, I guess the funding to do it. That we is made it cool, happen. man. That is great. Chiller coffee. Chiller coffee. I love it. That's really cool. Tales of suspense and horror. So how did you figure out, because we were talking off the air a little while ago, there are parts of Ohio. I mean, if you get away from the major Cincinnati, Dayton, Cleveland, Columbus, obviously, you get away from the major cities. There's a lot of like woods, farm area, like old areas that haven't really kind of caught up as far as development goes. And there's a lot of creepy things in this state. How did you get into where you started discovering all this stuff? I grew up in one of the creepiest areas in southeast Ohio. It's a small community called Beaver, Ohio. <laughs> oh, I thought you were next door to Lewis. Uh, <laughs> no, no. That, he was on the it's opposite funny, I was part of a community yeah. called Beaver, too. Was, <laughs> <laughs> really raised my body count, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what were you doing with the beavers? <laughs> yeah, you know? And, uh, saw this book <laughs> as a child that changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called, Hustler? <laughs> no, Will Chamberlain. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a biopic. <laughs> so, growing up in Beaver, there's not a lot to do. Plus, I was an only child. Still am at 49. I'm still an only child. My parents gave up a long time ago. God, so I was going to say at 49. Quit. I would imagine you're going to stay yes, one. I'm. I'm. I think they're done. <laughs> so. <laughs> so okay. Growing up in Beaver, yeah, we have an announcement to make. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you're going to be a big brother. What? What are you, Isaac and Sarah from the Old Testament? <laughs> so, no, they were the New Testament. Anyway, uh, growing up in, in Podunk, Pike County, Ohio, uh, that area is known for, well, increased poverty, uh, <laughs> starvation, as yeah. well as excessive pollution from the uranium enrichment plant. Uh, but there are so many weird and out-of-this-world stories that are not really 
well known throughout the state. Uh, you know, we had our own mountain witches down there. Uh, you had alleged satanic cults that met at the dunes out in East Yes, Jackson. yeah, I've heard about them. And then there were the big mass family murder. Yes, the Roden family yeah. mm-hmm. out in Latham, the Jasper area. Yeah. There was a uh, mass murder. It was all due to territory, drugs, and someone uh, making someone else's daughter mad. So yeah. there, there's a strong kinship factor in that region. And if you cross one, you cross them all. So. Especially Knock'em Stiff, where I've written about Knock'em Stiff in my book, Haunted Chillicothe, as well as my new book, Ghosts of Ross County, Ohio. You have to be very careful who you approach, who you talk about what to whom. Oh, wow. And you have to know someone who knows someone before you can even set foot in this area. And I grew up around there. And because I sound the way I sound and I look the way I look, they assume I'm city. Right. But no, it's just all the phonetics and public speaking classes I sure. got from yeah. OU. So I, I guess I used to have a bit of a Matthew McConaughey twang. I don't remember it, but <laughs> everyone's like, oh, you used to say, you used to talk like this sometimes. I, I don't remember that. So, well, um, I mean, yeah, right, it, makes, right, it right. makes sense. Yeah. You know. So yeah. approaching the people that I grew up with, they're very skittish around me at first. And then they start sharing their stories when mm-hmm. we share a common factor like a specific name or a person or a location or you know, a family member. Because in Pike County, it's all strictly relative. Then they start to open up. Yeah, they yeah. start to open up. And the the things that I have heard from people who have approached me, uh, even last week I did a I had a, a, a book session at the library in Waverly. Uh-huh. They hosted me for an event uh, to promote my new book, and every book I had I sold. I didn't expect to sell anything because Pike County extremely impoverished. People don't have twenty bucks here and there to throw for a book, let mm-hmm. alone take the time to read a book. But I was surprised and I was taken aback and felt bad for assuming that. Uh, but sold every book I had, answered every question they had. They were extremely satisfied and happy. Cool. And they want more. Yeah, so awesome. when I announced to them that I'm writing a, a follow-up called Pike County, Ohio, you'd think I lifted the roof off the building. <laughs> they, they went nuts with excitement and anticipation and just started, like, spitting all of these oh, things. Oh, they have stories. Me. Oh, yeah. They wanted to talk then because a local boy made it big. Right. So. And I don't look down on them, and you know we can talk to you, buddy. Yeah, so they're, they're, it works out. They're homeboys. Um, yeah. Two things. Jeremy wants to know if Elizabeth's grave made the book. It did. Did okay. yes. In fact, it made the graphic novel as well. Oh, very cool. Yes. And second of all, oh, it's I in see, the comic book too. I yes. see in your graphic novel you have space for ads. If someone hypothetically <laughs> wanted to maybe put, I don't know, let's take out an ad for their OnlyFans page, would that slide effectively into the comic book? Um. I'm just asking for Blitz Nation. <laughs> Sliding in, how exactly? I mean, like you know, you open, let's say you like you open up in the center, and oh wow, there's an OnlyFans ad in the center. Yeah, that would be fine. I okay. mean, as long as it's not like a centerfold and show on all the goods, because you, yeah, you, you want them you to want pay, to pay, for, pay that. for more. Yeah. Absolutely, don't give it all for and free. Maybe feet pics we would yeah. show. Yeah, sock covered feet pics. <laughs> so the um, now here's my thing too. Has seeing all this stuff made you what do you hear because there are people that either i think believe wholeheartedly that like supernatural things happen and ghosts and all that stuff are real and then there are people that are just adamant that it's all figments of imagination it's all because you put yourself in a certain headspace and you think you see things that you don't have you what do you say to people that you now that you've seen some of the stuff and you've been involved in some of this stuff like how do you convince people who are naysayers that there are stuff like this that is a real kind of thing and not just a headspace thing. There's like three different types of people that I have encountered uh, from that frame of mind. For, for example, though I'm I'm very uh, grounded in my Christian faith and I tie a lot of it into the science behind these encounters and the pseudoscience, the the paranormal. And they're like, "Well, how can you do this and uh, be a Christian?" And I'm like, "There's nothing more supernatural or paranormal than the birth life Death and yeah. resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, and we know we know damn well God didn't tell us everything. Yeah. Well, yeah, how, I mean, how how you know if you believe in God, th- then you kind of have, have to, to believe, believe in spirits, in angels, and especially since, uh, many scriptures warn about not talking to the dead or mm-hmm. communing with the dead. And you're not really sure who you're going to commune with. Uh, furthermore, and when you speak about it from a scientific perspective. We have only thoroughly explored a little over 5% of our own bodies of water on our planet. We know more about outer space than we do our own planet. 
and there are things popping up every day Mm -hmm. that are seen in massive bodies of water that we can't explain, that we've never seen, and we know that there's more and more that we have never encountered. And people telling stories about water monsters like Champ in Lake Champlain in Vermont and New York, or Nessie in in Scotland. Uh, There's no Mm -hmm. doubt that those things truly exist, because... You can't be everywhere every time at all points of the day for these things to right. have a massive amount of water to hide in, in as far as underground, underwater caves and whatnot. Uh, furthermore, you get into the Bigfoot or other cryptid-type creatures that are hiding in the wilderness. As far as man goes, we've only thoroughly explored about 47% of the wilderness within our planet. So, sure, there's been a lot of aerial shots and helicopters and drones flying over locations, but as far as man setting foot and walking into these regions or these areas, they've not been thoroughly explored. Yet we think we know it all. So, Ohio State story for you. If I say the name Billy Milligan, do you know who that is? Billy Milligan. I believe that was one of the people who drowned. No. Okay. He's the Ohio State rapist from 1977. Billy Milligan. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I can't so say I do. So I was in high school, and I will never forget this, because I forget where I was. It might have been one of those, like, youth conferences or whatever, and they had a survivor from the campus rapes uh, that happened in the 70s, the late 70s, and she was talking on the stage, and she was telling her story, and I'm paraphrasing, and forgive me if I get this wrong, because I'm not yeah. trying to. But she was sitting down, and she said that when she had walked across the campus that night, she knew that there were that the rapist was a thing because everybody was terrified at the time. And she said that she knew she had to get from, I think it was like one of the libraries or wherever, back to her dorm. And she kept hearing like someone was following her, someone was following her. And she said she didn't know what else to do, but she sat on a bench where there was a light, and she sat underneath the light, and she said she bowed her head and prayed. And Billy Milligan actually ran by her, stopped and looked, and kept going. And then a few minutes later, she heard the sirens or whatever. And as she was walking out where she saw towards the lights where they had caught him, uh, she said, what are you? She's like, what are you? Who's? She's like, that's the guy that ran by me. And he's like, well, if you saw her sitting there by yourself, why didn't you do anything to her? And he goes, I wasn't going to touch her with that big guy standing next to her. That's her? That's her. I've heard that story a thousand times. I had no idea that yes. was oh, wow. about Billy Milligan. But she had, yeah, she had, said, uh, like, the idea was that it was an angel that had came yeah. down and went, nah, dude, don't even think about it. I have kind heard of, that. Which is kind of wild. That is amazing. Yeah, so uh, that was here. Yeah. So, <laughs> car, audio, car Audio Thomas says, what's the author's name? I want his books. That is Neil Parks. <laughs> Corns on the Morning Blitz. It's 8.54 with Thick and Lewis. Kelly Quinn is out today, but Neil Parks joins us to talk about Schiller Coffee, his new book, and the other stuff that he's got going on. And now that's, the, that's the comic, right? Schiller yeah. Coffee. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, what's Ross County book called? Uh, exactly. Ghosts of Ross County. Ghosts of Ross County. You can actually find that at any Barnes & Noble in Columbus right now. I mean, I've gone mainstream, it feels like, uh, compared well, to my... Well, that's the goal, right? Yeah. My, my other works were independently published, of course, but this one, Ghosts of Ross County, is from History Press and Arcadia Publishing. All right. Tristan Tristan texted in and said, is the Ouija board legit? Well, does a nail go into the wood without a hammer? That's the way you have to look at it. It's a tool. Uh, it can also be used as a game. Now, when you drive a nail into the wood with a hammer... You can just tap it lightly. It goes in just a little. But if you really want to drive that nail, you got to hit it hard. Right. Same with the Ouija board. What are your intentions? What do you plan for the outcome to be? I want to communicate with the other side. So what do you? what's the difference? It can happen. Okay. It is entirely possible depending on your intentions, your state of mind, and who you get on the other line. It's a party line. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. You got to look at it like that. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's My just, luck, just call I'd... up and chat with somebody. <laughs> we don't know who we're going to get. My luck, I'd get like the Napoleon Dynamite of the party. <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? would be great, man. Gosh. He'll bring, God. You, he'll bring you a delicious bass. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you stay, go out, why don't you just stay here and practice your sweet dance moves? No. <laughs> Germ talks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um... 
Doug said his mom worked at Urbana University and swears she had a paranormal experience in the building there. Isn't Ohio University... Yes. That's what I thought. Yes, we have the, like, I'm still there. When I attended, <laughs> when I attended back in the early 2000s and late 90s, uh, there was the former, I'll call it what it was, an insane asylum, uh, which was used at one point as a tuberculosis clinic as well. Hmm. And they moved in the 70s and 80s when it was deemed inhumane to do electroshock therapy and the things they were doing to people in mental institutions. They then started moving them into old folks' homes, Mm. uh, which there are some residents that I've encountered and past dealings that were residents at one time at the Ridges. And they were not normal folk, unfortunately, Mm. with what the trauma was they experienced. Wow, man. Time always flies by. We're up against a break. Been great having you in again. It is your time of year. I hope you have an awesome Halloween. And one more time, where can I get the book and the, the graphic novel? Comic graphic book? novel you can get online at Mill City Apparel. And that's Silver, uh, Chiller Coffee. Chiller Coffee. Yep. And my new book is Ghosts of Ross County, Ohio. You can get it at any major retailer, including Target, Walgreens, Walmart, and Barnes & Noble. Amazon, of course. And next year we'll get Ghosts of Pike. County. County and I'm still waiting to meet a ghost, so if you got a good place, Lewis, we need to go. We need to go on a ghost hunt. Yeah, I'm uh, ready. Let's do it. Just, I would love to go like on a ghost hunt again. I've done it before. It's fun. Because I've never seen one ever in my you've life. Never felt I've never, any kind of a presence. I've never or... hell had that experience. Okay. So that's why I'm like, I, I want to. I really do. I Well, I okay, I think I want, want to. to. <laughs> you but want to meet the right kind. I, in any, I just I just want to know. I, I want just a cool want ghost. Something. I don't want to free the one that's pissed off at the world yeah. and is coming after me. <laughs> like, right. You know, you I want, want the... Oh, want the she change. won't be back till Thursday. You want so. the James <laughs> Dean ghost. Yeah, the James Dean yeah. ghost. The Elvis ghost. Yeah. yeah. The cool Not ghost. The fat like, Elvis. Like, vibe with me. Yeah, I want yeah. skinny Elvis before skinny the, Elvis you know... Ghost. <laughs> back in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully we can hook that up sometime. But have a great Halloween. Thanks for coming in. Man. Thanks so Neil. much for having me again. And now, three things you need to know before you go. Well... Vice President Kamala Harris has announced that she will sit down with uh, Joe Rogan. They're trying to set up something where she can join his podcast for an interview. But the big one is she's going to sit down for an exclusive interview with Fox News. The network announced Monday anchor Brett Baer will interview the presidential candidate. It'll air Wednesday from Pennsylvania, a key battleground state this November. A North Carolina man is facing charges for allegedly threatening FEMA workers. The Rutherford County Sheriff's Office said 44-year-old William Parsons was arrested and charged with going armed to the terror of the public. On Saturday, the Sheriff's Office investigated reports about a male with an assault rifle making a comment about possibly harming FEMA employees. Hmm. You cannot like the policies, but taking it out on the employee is not the way to get that point across, that's for sure. Well, Frito-Lay is opening a Doritos-themed restaurant in Los Angeles. It'll be open for late-night snacks inside the Crypto.com arena. The menu features Doritos-infused dishes like spicy sweet chili ramen burritos and nacho cheese vanilla cones. The Doritos restaurant will be available for event ticket holders only, but beginning on November 15th, a pop-up version of the eatery will operate outside the arena. So if you're ever in California and you're trying to get a Doritos themed restaurant fix, there you go. What are, what are we supposed to do? I don't know, but I've used Doritos in several different recipes before. If you're mm-hmm. making like a little, little taco bake action, yeah. drop some uh, Doritos in there. The purple bag sweet chili is yes. pretty good. The barbecue is legit. And when they bring back the hot mustard that tastes just like McDonald's hot mustard sauce, that is legit. Sweet chili is my favorite. Sweet chili is a good go-to. It's funny. Doritos is another brand that I get any flavor but the normal nacho cheese, the normal standard Dorito flavor. <laughs> like, oh, they got that. What else you got? What other flavors? Spicy chili. Spicy chili. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. It's the morning blitz. Nine ten. Thick and Lewis Kelly will be back on Thursday. Thursday. Don't forget, Ronnie, at 420 today, we'll have another Sonic Temple song. Uh, she'll tell you what it is. We'll play it back tomorrow morning, and you could be on your way to Sonic Temple in May of 2025. Mother's Day weekend, no less. Can't wait. Just keeps getting better and better. Don't think the Gallagher's, the Brothers Gallagher, will be part of the Sonic Temple festivities. No, probably not. And I don't think they're going to go on Saturday Night Live anytime soon. Uh, they did an Oasis bit over there uh, on their weekend update. And uh, two cast members portrayed, you know, Liam and Noel. And Liam was not happy about it. Uh, 
fans of the band posted negative comments. Liam chimed in with, uh, he said, are they meant to be comedians? Like, okay, all right, that's fine. You want to take your shot. But yeah, they are. And it's funny. Listen. Thanks for being here. Now, everyone's wondering, are you guys going to be cool to tour a year from now? It's not a hard no. It's a maybe. <laughs> it's a maybe. <laughs> if Liam doesn't act like a baby. <laughs> Baby, you're a baby. You're a baby. You're a baby. Stop, oh, stop his tongue at me. Colin, did you see that? Come on, he's been naughty. He's been naughty, Colin. There must be something that you both agree on. I guess there are a few things, yeah. SpongeBob. Legend. Legend. Is the best Ninja Turtle. Oh, Donatello. Legend. Legend. There must be things you agree on besides cartoons. All right. Favorite Sex in the City boyfriend. Steve. Steve. Legend. Legend. <laughs> Sex in the City boyfriend, oh, Mr. Mr. Big, Big Toxic, toxic Legend. legend. Oh, Will Smith film. I am legend, 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 double legend. Oasis, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she could have been far worse. Oh my gosh. I thought it was great. There's got to be, I haven't looked, there's got to be an, uh, a bet in Vegas that can be made about when the first Gallagher brother punch is thrown. Oh, it, it has to happen at some point. Uh, it was James Austin Johnson and Sarah Sherman. I love that they had Sarah playing. <laughs> yeah, but what's your face played Rudy Giuliani forever? Right, right. Oh, that was good stuff. Or Kristen man. Wiig. She was so. It happens from time to time, but you know, if the Brothers Oasis just weren't fighting for thirty years, no one would get the vibe that they didn't get along. I mean, yeah, you kind of did that to yourself. But they did it in public all the time. All the time. All the time. So. But for Liam to get upset, seriously, dude, what do you expect? I mean, what really, what do you expect is going to happen? This is Saturday Night Live. They're having fun. If you can't, after all this crap for 30 years, as you were talking about, now you're going to play this tour. If you can't laugh at yourself a little bit, dude, seriously. Well, not everybody matures after 30 years, I guess. I guess not. But yeah, so we'll, we'll see how long this lasts.